G'day fellas. Welcome to a video where we're going to be taking a look at how to counter units and not just counter units in general, but how to counter every single unique unit in the game. So what you're seeing up on your screen right now is a very basic look at an overview of units in general. So we're going to start just by taking it slowly. I've got a lot more advanced stuff that I'm going to be showing you guys, but this is just where we need to get as a base. All right. So I've grouped units into what I consider to be relatively similar classes and roles. So just to drive you through it, okay? We've got our Musketeer class. We've got our Big Beefy Boy class. We've got our Pikeman class. We've got our Carabiner or our Dragoon class. We've got our Hand Cavalry class. We've then got our Artillery class. We've got our Ranged Infantry class. And then we've got a couple different Artillery classes that go in there. So the classes are denoted by the colors. So any color that you see is going to represent a class. These are the unique units that I've identified that I am satisfied don't fit into these roles. As I'm sure you will have noticed, there are unique units within these roles that already exist. If they are already within that role, so say for example, the Aina or the Maceman, then they fill that role. They are as a skirmisher. So if you're wondering, oh, how do I counter the Maceman? You treat it the same way you would treat a skirmisher. So moving forward, how do we determine where something's position is on this chart? So it's going to be based off what the unit counters. So if you see a red line going from here over to here, it means that the red line is countering that unit class. Now, you definitely wouldn't see it in this case. You would not see hand cavalry countering the big beefy boy. Okay, you would actually see it coming the other way. A doppel is going to counter the uh, the hand cavalry. So you would subsequently see a blue line coming from here over to here. Now, I apologize. It may look messy. Okay, I'm going to take you guys over to the next screen. It's going to probably look messy, but I want you to bear with me. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right. So we're just going to take a very, very small or, or I'm, I'm going to try and guide you through it. Okay, just to try and keep it simple just the start all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna be using uh, a white pen here you guys can see it. i'm just gonna increase that brush size a little bit just so you can see it a bit better all right so we've got here this is our ranged infantry our skirmishers so our skirmishers counter musketeers because they're heavy infantry they counter big beefy boys because they're heavy infantry and they also counter pikemen because they're heavy infantry now in addition to that they also counter so if i take this off they also counter down here, our ranged cavalry. Okay, so now I'm drawing a green line down to our ranged cavalry. Okay, now that's a technical counter. Okay, they get an actual bonus against ranged cavalry. They get a, a, a multiplier. You can read it on the UI. It's there. Now, in addition to that, okay, so we've got these, uh, these units here uh, that counter these three groups, or technically four groups uh, of units. Now, keep in mind, th these are groups that I have just drawn up, all right? Big Beefy Boy, that's not a real unit class, okay? But we're going to be talking about why Big Beefy Boy exists, because that's a really important unit class. All right, so then from there, working backwards, then you've got the Cavalry class, the Hand Cavalry class. So the Hand Cavalry class counters this class here, the Skirmisher class, but it also counters our Artillery and our other artillery. So we've got two different types of artillery class, but they're, they're grouped separately. I will go into that, uh, but you know, just, just where we're working from there. And then we, we take a step back and we have a look and we can see the blue lines that are coming into it indicate that the blue lines counter it. The yellow lines coming into it indicates that the yellow line counters it. So we can see that all three of these unit classes counter this one and this class here counters this as well. So then coming back, we've then got our Dragoon class or our Carabiner class. They counter the Hand Cavalry because the line is the same color. It's pointing there. They also counter our Artillery as well. So I hope that this makes sense to you guys. And uh, and then f finally, we've got our Artillery class. And as you can see, there is a line running along the top. This indicates that the Artillery class counters all of the infantry. Uh, that is all the infantry, quite literally all the infantry. So from there, you've also got subsequent classes of artillery. So we have our Culverin class of artillery. Okay, that's this class right here. These guys counter this artillery. So they're anti-artillery. 
but there's also another class of culverin, so anti-artillery, and it's this class here. And you might be asking, okay, but Drongo, why are there two different classes? And that's because these two classes actually have different roles. So while these guys are culverin, okay, in that they kill artillery, these guys are here as well, but these guys also counter infantry. They also kill infantry. So you see that line that goes right there, goes all the way up the top. And then finally, we've got our mortars. These guys counter buildings. Now I didn't bother putting all of the buildings into their own separate boxes. The barracks here is just gonna represent what buildings are and the mortars countering them. So they're obviously artillery as well, countered by culverins, anti-artillery, that sort of stuff. So now that we've got that, so th this is a very f uh, basic uh, overview of, of what it looks like. I'm just going to get a little bit more advanced before we get into the unique units. Uh, and I appreciate this is probably going to be a really long video. So I apologize in advance. This is coming uh, exclusive to YouTube. So there's no Twitch involved in this. It's just me talking with the boys on the YouTube. All right. So now we've got the musketeer. So we're going to take a look at the musketeer. So the musketeer counters hand cavalry, but it only counters hand cavalry in melee. That's the trick, okay? It only counters it in melee, with the exception of the Corollian, which counters it at range. You could almost treat the Corollian like a Dragoon in that regard, okay? Now, the next class, the, so the Pikeman's got a quite clear role. You you understand how the Pikeman works. It, it can only be a melee unit, but at the same time, with being a, a melee unit, uh, it, you know, I, actually, I don't know what I was going to say there. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> let's move on to big beefy boys. Now, the reason why these guys are separate is because these guys pose a threat to every single unit on the battlefield if you ignore them. So technically, a skirmisher will counter a big beefy boy. But if your opponent builds doppels or if your opponent builds skull knights and these guys get up on you, if they get up on in your grill, they get on top of your artillery, they get on top of anything, they will beat it. 100%. There's no two ways about it, okay? Three Skull Knights versus six Skirmishers. Yeah, Skirmishers win. But what happens when those six Skirmishers are sieging an outpost and three Skull Knights pop out on top of them? Or the Skull Knights win. So it's uh, that's why they're treated as a separate class because you need to pay a lot of respect to these units. If you see these units out, you need to be very careful and you need to focus them down, uh, especially these two and these two here. The Halberdier... It's a little bit different because he doesn't have a um, he doesn't have AOE area of effect, but he can still do the same thing, especially with speed upgrades. Now, most of these units can be speed upgraded, with the exception of the Maceman. Uh, all of these guys can get speed upgrades, so you do need to be careful of them. So that's that. So other than that, I think that's pretty much the overview done of everything that's in here. Okay, so we're going to move forward now with the unique units. So the unique units are, are down here in the corner. Now, these are the ones that I've identified as not belonging specifically to a group or maybe maybe being ambiguous in their labeling. And so I'm going to try and do my best to go through all of that stuff now and, and do my best to explain. And we'll start with the easy ones. So the very first one, the easiest one, is the Eagle Runner Knight. Now, people will see a tag on this. Uh, I, I think it's called Coyote Man uh, or... Uh, I can't remember the exact tag, but it, it, it can get a little bit confusing. When you see this guy on the field, okay, he is a Dragoon. He belongs in the Dragoon class. We're going to put him in the Dragoon class with the other Dragoons, okay? He is exactly a Dragoon. He does very, very well against skirmishers, okay? Because you need to remember, he looks like an infantry unit, okay? He throws a little spear, but he's a Dragoon, okay? So he's like, he's like uh, he costs a lot of population. He's very expensive, so when he's killing your skirmishers, don't be surprised, okay? You know, th that's that's the first thing. Uh, so treat it as a Dragoon. You're going to counter it with, with all of these units up here. Uh, the next one is the Coyote. Now the Coyote, it's going to be the same thing. So the Coyote is a, uh, a hand cavalry. So we'll put it there. Uh, I've just remembered there's also a Chimu Runner. Now I can't see that I've put the Chimu Runner on here, but you can assume that the Chimu Runner and the Coyote are the same thing. So they are a hand cavalry. Uh, it's just that they, they look like an infantry. They are not. They, they are a hand cavalry. So they serve that same role. Anti-artillery, uh, anti-skirmisher. But they will die to, to all of these three heavy units. They will also die to the ranged cavalry over here. So the next one, probably a bit more of an interesting unit. 
uh, quite dynamic in the way that it changes the battlefield. A very unique unit is the Rifle Rider. So the Rifle Rider at its core appears to be a Dragoon, okay? So it appears uh, to have Dragoonian-like features, but the Rifle Rider, in addition to countering all of... Um, or to countering all of... Sorry, just let me get my pen ready. Okay, so in addition to countering all of these hand cavalries as a Dragoon, it also acts as a skirmisher in that it counters heavy infantry. So heavy infantry being one, two, three. It count. It has a ranged bonus against all of these infantry here. Now, I'm not going to, to leave these lines here because if I left all of these, these lines here, it would get crazy in here. So I'm just going to remove those lines, but keep in, keep that in mind, okay? I'll leave timestamps down in the description if there's a unit in particular that you're having trouble with, come down, have a look at it, okay? But you need to treat this like a Dragoon unit that can counter hand cavalry. So how do you counter that? Skirmishes and Dragoons. So it's actually classed as a heavy cavalry as well. So I could even, you could move it over here just because of, it, it's a ranged cavalry, but it's also a, a heavy cavalry. And being a heavy cavalry, it means it's countered by Dragoons. So you could almost put it in the middle here because it's countered by Dragoons and it counters as a Dragoon. So very, very fun unit. Really, really strong. Absolutely love that that unit. All right, so the next unit we'll, we'll talk about is the Jaguar Prowler. It's quite similar to the Rifle Rider. It's almost a melee version of the Rifle Rider. Now we're going to put it up here with the big beefy boys because uh, it is a big beefy boy. Uh, it's a little bit different in that it doesn't have AOE, but if you do, if it does get on top of your units, even if they're skirmishers, uh, it, it can still do quite a lot of damage. So you got to be careful with them. They can go invisible, so keep your explorer nearby. So it is treated. It's an infantry unit, which means it, it gets countered by artillery, uh, but it is also a heavy infantry unit, meaning it gets countered by skirmishers, but it has a bonus against cavalry. Uh, so it, it counters these guys, just like the musketeer would in melee, so it can only go in melee, but it counters itself. And it counters, so in countering itself, it can counter heavy infantry. So it counters muskets, it counters big boys, it counters uh, pikemen, it counters all three of them. So it's it's like this thing, rifle riders actually counter themselves as well, because they have a bonus against hand cavalry, or heavy cavalry rather, and they are heavy cavalry. So if you, you're in a Lakota mirror, don't build rifle riders, because they're, they're just going to get very easily countered by, by bow riders. Um, but uh, essentially, that, that's it. So they've got the multiplier against cavalry. Uh, so you'd be using skirmishes against these. But uh, the, the position that I'm placing it is essentially where you would assume a counter would, would, would lie. All right. So the next one coming up is the Nizam Fusilier. Quite an interesting uh, unit overall. Uh, so we're going to be putting this in the Musketeer class. The Nizam Fusilier is countered by skirmishers. I should probably put it out of the musketeers uh, and I should probably pull this out just so you guys can see the unique units uh, in, in case you are wondering later and come back into the video. So the Nizam Fusilier uh, musketeer type unit. So he's countered by the skirmishers. The, the skirmishers will kill him. Now, depending on what the musketeer, uh, what the Nizam Fusilier stance is. So you know how units can go into stances. They can have like melee stance, uh, defensive mode, they can have offensive mode, and then they can have stagger mode. Depending on what his mode is, will depend on what his bonus is. So he can get a bonus against infantry, just infantry, all infantry, just infantry. He counters everything. He can get a bonus against cavalry. And he can get a bonus against artillery as well. Now, there's not many units in, in, this, in, the, in the game that, that get bonus against siege units or artillery, uh, but the Nizam Fusilier is, is one of them. Uh, and so it it's it's very micro dependent. You need to pay attention to what your uh, what it actually is using. So the Nizam Fusilier, for anybody wondering, is a unique unit for the Ottomans. It's available only once they reach. I think it's the f uh, the third age with the unique church card. Uh, so it's 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 a difficult unit to master. You do really need to pay attention. I think it also changes like when you change stance, it changes the range of the unit as well. So it's quite a complex unit. Uh, so the next unit coming up is the Rodolero. Now, this Rodolero is... It was a bit a bit tough for me to choose where to put it exactly because it is a pikeman, but at the same time, it can be a big beefy boy. So you do have to be careful. If your opponent has a lot of upgrades for this unit, okay, it, it can be both these. So if you even if you've got skirmishers, 
your opponent will be able to to deal with you quite effectively because they are very very quick they're almost like cavalry they've got six movement speed okay but you would they do have a multiplier against cavalry so it means ranged cavalry as well as hand cavalry they've got multipliers against and skirmishers do beat them uh as long as they're at range but if they're carded and if they're right on top of you and you know they're, they're they get pretty darn quick uh, if, if someone does fully upgrade them, they can, they can do a lot of damage, especially if your opponent combines it with like just a falconet or two. So watch out for the rodel arrows. Uh, so the next one that we're going to talk about, what do we got in here that we can talk about? Uh, so we can talk about the grenadier. The grenadier is uh, another curious case, kind of like a musketeer. Uh, it's So it's countered by, uh, to be honest, it's probably not even like a musketeer. Now that I think about it, it's probably a bit more like a skirmisher just in the way that you counter it. So if, if you want to, if your opponent's building uh, musket uh, grenadiers, you want to be building hand cavalry to kill it. Uh, but you you probably want to avoid building too much ranged infantry. Technically, ranged infantry does counter the grenadier. Okay, it is considered a heavy infantry unit, and it will be countered just like the musketeer or the beefy boys or the pikemen. Okay, but the problem is it's got fifty percent range resist, which is really high. Which means that you know that double damage that you do well. Okay, it's gone completely, completely mitigated by that 50% range resist. So it, it like technically, yes, it does work, uh, but you just got to be careful because if your opponent gets into range with them and they get off a good volley, you can say goodbye to 10, 15 units in a, in a single volley. It gets ridiculous really quickly. But at the end of the day, it is an infantry unit. It's a, um, it's, it doesn't have a, any bonus against cavalry. Uh, so quite effectively, it can, it can be dealt with with hand cavalry. All right, so the next one coming up, uh, I think we can probably just go with the Arrow Knight. Arrow Knight is a siege unit. Uh, so I don't think it's, it's not technically artillery. So it that means that being a siege unit, uh, it, it belongs over this side of the board, but it's not artillery. So this is artillery. They all have the artillery tag, so we can't put him in here. We'll just kind of, I, I think we just like leave him up here. Okay, and realistically like he's he's in a, in a branch of his own really he's a mortar in that he counters buildings he's also a culverin just like this in that he counters artillery i guess you could probably put him down here uh i guess that's that's probably the best spot for him to go would be down here with these guys uh that actually that that makes that makes a lot of sense he's kind of like a hand mortar really yeah okay i don't even know why he's not in there he should just be in there with all the hand mortars uh, and, and the culverins, because like that that's his job. Now, th there is actually one guy on the ladder, I think he's like top 200, and he uses these things as like actual archer units, because they've got 30 range, it's really far, but they've got like 10 attack, it's not a lot. Compare that to like a longbow, which has got like more than 20 attack and a much faster rate of fire. It's, um yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting, let's just say that much, but uh, you know, it works for him. Uh, so the next units that we're going to be looking at, we might go to uh, to the Inca units, so we've got the Bolus Warrior. So the Bolus Warrior, bit of a strange unit, bit of a strange unit. So the Bolus Warrior is, technically it's a Dragoon, but it moves slow, like a heavy infantry. Uh, and being a Dragoon, it is countered by the Skirmishers. But it's got this weird thing where it snares its opponents and it's, it's very slow. But at the same time, it's kind of like a Musketeer in that it gets a bonus against Cavalry in melee. Uh, and it's, it's quite a strong bonus as well. Uh, but it, it is, it technically, it's a Dragoon unit. Um, you know, the, the bonuses that it gets do counter that. But one of the issues that you can get with the Inca is when you're playing against them, all of the units look very similar. Like, even if you were to take the Haraka, like, the, these units, like, obviously, if you put them side by side, they look very different. But if you, like, you know, if, if I pull one over here and then you look over at that one, they kind of look the same. Like, they both got those sling things um and it's the exact same on the battlefield it can be difficult to tell what the incan units are so it's, it's important that you do try and train yourself and really get familiar with them uh but th that that would be it so when when they are counted so uh i don't think that they've got any kind of heavy uh they've got any kind of uh, cavalry tag on them uh actually you know what we're just gonna we're gonna double check that one right now i think that's important that we just double check that one uh, i'm gonna pull that one up now uh so i'm just gonna type that in age of empires Three Bolus Warrior. Let's find out. We can do that live. We're doing it live. Inca Bolus Warrior. So the Inca Bolus Warrior, the tags that it's technically got are infantry, archer, ranged infantry, and native warrior. Okay, but you got to remember, what does it counter? It counters heavy 
Uh, so it's, it, it's got a multiplier. It's saying here that it's got a multiplier against heavy infantry. Uh, I don't know if we're talking about the same unit. I'm I'm starting up Age of Empires right now. I got, I, I got to see this. We, we, well, we got to see this live because m maybe the Bolus Warrior was just... Maybe it's just misunderstood. Maybe I just don't know enough about the Bolus Warrior. To be honest, I haven't really played a lot of Inca, but I think it's important that uh, that we get this right, we get this accurate. I had been treating them as a... Uh... Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm looking at melee attack. Let's have a look at ranged attack. Oh, the multipliers are the same as the ranged attack. So it's saying that it's got a two times multiplier against heavy infantry, which would make it a skirmisher unit. Uh, so let's go have a look. Hopefully, I'm, I'm sure that this won't extend it out by too much. Uh, if you don't want to see this, you can just skip along, uh, go to the next unit. Uh, so... Just quickly do this one. Oh my god, that's loud, isn't it? Uh, so we want this. And then we get the bolus warrior out. Okay, I have no idea why it's saying on the wiki that it's got a bonus against heavy infantry. That is not heavy infantry, my friend. That is hand cavalry. So I was right. So it's got a bonus against hand cavalry. It also has a bonus against itself, light range cavalry. Even though technically it's not light range cavalry. Uh, and you can see that it is heavy infantry. So it's countered by skirmishers. Uh, but uh, it, it would also be countered by like falconets. So it's it's a little bit of a weird unit being being countered by falconets as an infantry, but at the same time doing the job of a dragoon. So probably putting it down here with like with the skirmisher type units, and then just yeah, it, it, it this is one of those unique units that's really a little bit weird. That and that wiki needs updating. I don't know whose job that is. Cheryl, Cheryl, update the wiki. It's wrong. What are you doing, you crazy lady? All right. Moving on. So now we've got the Harakas. Harakas are kind of like, to be honest, the Harakas probably sit in this group. The Harakas have got a very high damage output. So they're kind of like the Abus guns uh, in that regard, except that the Haraka have a very high uh, siege attack range. And they can also siege buildings, or they can siege ships, I think, with their ranged attack. So what that means is that they do very, very well against buildings they do very well against anim uh, against artillery so that's all forms of artillery you can use them against these guys but they don't have the artillery tag as far as i'm aware now i, I gotta check these incan units man they're, they're like they're starting to scam me give me a second hold on I, the problem is how do i spell haraka huaraka let's try that i got it i got it the first time can you believe that haraka so i don't know if we can trust this website now so they've got a 40 damage, which is, uh, if I remember correctly, it's a siege damage. And they just do a 0.5 against heavy cavalry. Uh, see, I don't, I don't believe this website now. I, don't, I, don't, I can't believe this website. Um, so we'll, we'll just go off, off what my memory is. But it, it essentially, it serves, it's an infantry unit. So it's going to get countered by these guys. But uh, it, it does incredibly well against most units. Uh, with the with the exception of hand cavalry, so hand cavalry will counter them. If your opponent is building harakas, you want to be going hand cavalry. Uh, if, if your opponent has got falconets, okay, you can pretty no you can normally overwhelm them with harakas. If you, your opponent's got two falcs and you've got like six harakas, you'll you'll kill the falcs, no problem, no, like no question about it. Uh, so they'll do their job. Uh, so they're, they're they're a very strong culverin style unit in that they can take out artillery. You've got a, a long range, good upgrade cards as well. Uh, but if, if your opponent is building them, you do want to be countering them with hand cavalry. You can counter them with skirmishes, uh, but it's important to remember they, they trade quite well into skirmishes. I think they've got quite a high uh, range resist. I'm going to check the wiki, even though I don't trust it. It's got a 30% resist versus range. Uh, but uh, yeah, that, that would be it. All right. So the next one, the flamethrower. The flamethrower is a... Uh, it's... I'm just popping it in the middle because it's one of those units. So it's it's got a lot of tags on it. So it's got a siege unit uh, tag on it. it. It's This is not an artillery unit though. So people will often think, oh, flamethrower, you know, that, that's a rocket. That's a falconet. No, it's not. It's not. It's a siege unit. Uh, so it's a different different uh, tag altogether. So the only thing that has a bonus against this, I think is the Nizam Fusilia and Minutemen. Like that's it. Nothing else has got a bonus against siege units. Uh, but like towers, I think have a negative bonus against siege units, uh, and, and same with tower centers, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, but I'd, I'd have to double check, but these guys, so they, they have an absolutely ridiculous area of effect, 
Uh, and they counter anything that's infantry. If they can get close enough, that's the trick. If they can get close enough. So technically, while they do counter skirmishes, uh, what you will see is if your opponent is building these, I would encourage you keep building, uh, keep building ranged infantry and you want to try and one shot these. OK, so they do have a quite a high uh, range resist. If I remember correctly, I think it's 50 percent range resist. And what you're going to be doing is trying to one shot them down. So you really need to focus them down because if they get up close and they take you out, it's going to be really hard to deal with them, especially if there's enemy cavalry in the midst. So if they're hitting you with like, um, you know, a, a step step riders mixed with flamethrowers. You, you really want to be focusing down the flamethrowers with, with your infantry. Uh, they also d die to uh, hand cavalry. They do also die to ranged cavalry, but remember with the 50% range resist, they are going to be, um, they're going to be surviving for quite a bit, especially because ranged cavalry typically have got very, very low base damage, but high multipliers. So as an example, like the Dragoon, I think it's got like a base of, you know, 16 attack, something like that, but then it's got a times three against cavalry so if you're doing you know 16 attack against this but it doesn't have any times against it then you're only doing eight attack you know so it, it's important to be cognizant of that um but uh, definitely you know the mass that you can build up you know like a whole bunch of maces is going to be able to two shot this uh, a whole bunch of of uh, of casadors you know i think about maybe like 20 25 casadors should be able to one shot that so that's that's something to be aware of uh, so, but they're, they're not counted by the, the same style of unit over here. Uh, then, so next coming up is the, uh, <laughs> the flail elephant. If you, if you don't want to hear my impression of a flail elephant, I encourage you to, to turn off your headset right now. It's like, it's something like this. It's, it's kind of like a donkey, but it just does that forever. It's like, it's, it's terrible. I don't know who thought that that would be a good idea putting that into the game, but it's fucking hilarious when it plays. So the flail elephant is a siege unit, okay, the same same as this unit over here, the flamethrower, okay, it's a, a siege unit, but it is a cavalry unit, so it gets countered by your your typical uh, anti-cavalry, so these guys, these guys, and these guys, so that that is, uh, that's essentially what it does. Uh, now, I, I think it is a, um, uh, it's just treated as cavalry, I don't think it's treated as uh, hand cavalry, so I if I remember correctly, I don't think these guys will counter it. Uh, next up, the petard. The petard is a... <laughs> well, look, if your opponent's beating you with petards... Uh, I'm not looking at anybody major kill. If your opponent's beating you with petards uh, and just petards, um, you, you got to reassess yourself. Otherwise, you're going to wreck yourself. So I encourage you to check yourself. Uh, the petard is incredibly strong against buildings. But that's pretty much it. It's got an attack of like five or seven... Uh, pretty high range resist and a big health pool, but it doesn't really do a lot. So it sits up here. It's up here with the mortars. Uh, if your opponent's building petards, Minutemen are, are what are going to kill it because it is a siege unit. Speaking of siege units, we've got two more siege units. So we've got the ram. So for anybody who's been off to the ranch, the ram is uh, is quite difficult to deal with, uh, especially if they get underneath your buildings, uh, just because they, they, they make a good noise as well. <laughs> That's, that's essentially what it sounds like. Uh, and so it, it, it's, I think it's an infantry unit as well as a siege unit. So if you've got lancers, lancers will counter both of these units because they're infantry and lancers get a bonus against all infantry. Uh, whereas uh, if we were to take a look at the the mantlet, it's, uh, it's a siege unit. Let's let's go in and let's, let's take a look at it right now. I'm actually curious about, actually, do we load up the, the wiki? Do we trust the wiki? Let's, let's try mantlet. Here we go. So it's, we know that it's got a pretty high range resist, 50% range resist, uh, trained from the siege workshop. So it's, it's an infantry unit as well as a siege unit and a ranged infantry. Uh, so once again, your Lancer is going to be able to counter it. Uh, if you've got any kind of uh, skirmisher unit, it's, it's really not going to be able to penetrate that big shield. 50% range resist is quite high. So encouraging you to build your hand cavalry against all of these units. But keep in mind, you know, th these... They've got very high siege, but quite low attack. The ram can't even attack units. It can only attack buildings. And the final unit is the Yurumi. So the Yurumi. I think, you know, people see the Yurumi and they just, they get scared. You know, the the word that I think, when I hear Yurumi, I think of pop. Yurumi pop. What's that? That's where, you know, your opponent's got the Agrifort. It's in the middle of the map. They've just aged up a couple seconds ago. You, you, you see them age up, so you think, all right, I've got to push them now before they get their upgrades. A fight starts to happen underneath the Agrifort, and all of a sudden, the Yurumi pop. The Yurumi pop 
and absolutely kill everything. They've got a really high rate of fire. What you want to think of these guys as, are they kind of like a skirmisher that kills other skirmishers? They, they have a bonus against infantry. So just all infantry. Uh, if, if I remember correctly, I, I, you know what? I'm just, I'm like second guessing myself at this point. You're Rumi. So they have, they have a 1.75 bonus against heavy infantry, apparently. So, so just, just heavy infantry. There you go. 1.75 bonus against heavy infantry. So think of them as, as a skirmisher unit, uh, that, that needs to get up close. That's the key. Now, the thing is it can get up close and it can absolutely shred your skirmishers as well. And that's primarily because it's got that 30% range resist. It's also got quite a high speed. So it's got a 4.5 movement speed. And if, if if it gets right on top of you, like with a Yurumi pop, and there's like Mahouts in the piece. Where's the Mahout? Where's my boy down here? And there's Mahouts as well. Oh my God. It's just like in India lives for like the Mahout and Yurumi pop at the same time. It's like, you know, from a stable standing ne or sitting next to an Agrafort or an outpost or, or a, a castle or something like that. Um, but... Yeah, and the, the Yumi also counter uh, ranged cavalry as well, uh, but ideally uh, you're going to be using them to to kill enemy heavy infantry or e even the skirms, uh, just because. And, and they make that cool sound. It's like the whoosh, whoosh sound, like the whippy sound. Um, all right, fellas. Well, I, I hope that I've included every unit in here. I know that I'm missing the Chimu runner off this list. If I've missed anything off this list, I'd encourage you check down below or, or write write down in the comments below. And I'll, I'll get back to you and about, you know, when to counter it and what to do if I have missed a unit. I, I think I've got them all, though. Uh, other than that, guys, this weekend, we've got the Table Topper coming up. So if you don't know what the Table Topper is, the Table Topper is an event sponsored by Elite Gaming Channel. So I'm going to be hosting it. I'm going to be doing all the casts for it. And it's going to be between the players at the top of the ladder. So these are the players who were rated uh, the top five. And we're, they're going to be fighting it out this weekend. They're going to be playing the United States. We actually said to them, we're going to make you guys play the United States. And you know what they said? They said, all right, we'll do it. <laughs> so we're going to have some United States action this weekend. Uh, so if you're interested in seeing that, so that's going to be going live at 18 GMT on Friday. Uh, it'll also be going live at 18 GMT on Saturday and Sunday. Uh, so it'll be three days of events. So the first two days we're going to be having preliminaries. The second day is the semi and the third day is the final. And you might be wondering, well, how does that work? Only, you know, two preliminaries and one semi and then one final. So the player who finished rank one, they got a buy through to the final. Kanushal Bear. He was successful. He retained his rank at rank one when the table topper uh, concluded for the month of April. And he's being rewarded as, as a result. Um, so if, if you're interested in seeing that, I'll leave a link down in the description to Twitch. Uh, Come along at 18 GMT. And other than that, I hope you have enjoyed this video. And thank you guys so much for watching.